My dear brothers and sisters, on this Easter Sunday, we are experiencing what is in my memory an unprecedented time of separation. Social distancing and stay-at-home directives have entered our vocabulary and have taken their place in a way that is both current and immediate and, and also which feels at times like it will be both be lasting and perhaps permanent. We cannot help but wonder how this experience will have changed us even after the pandemic has receded and we are able to meet again in person and worship together. This pondering and wondering is a natural human response. At times, as time has marched on and days have turned into weeks, I have become increasingly aware of how much I miss by not seeing the faces of many of you looking back at me as we sit together in sacrament meeting. I gain strength from your smiles and nods and kind words, and even just by your presence. I believe we all need that fellowship, and I believe we all benefit from the connection to each other that comes from shared worship of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ. I have also come to realize how much more difficult it is for me to fulfill my sacred responsibilities as your bishop, to seek out those in need when I have such limited opportunities to see your faces. I have certainly felt God's guidance and direction over these past few weeks, and I am humbled by and grateful for the gift of those promptings. But the visual cues of seeing your face and your faces in order to prompt direction to me by the Spirit have been a, a consistent support and blessing to me in my service over the last two years. To help to counter what we have lost for a season, you've probably noticed that the Ward Council has increased our use of technology, Facebook, text, email, phone calls, church videos, Zoom firesides, virtual Relief Society and Sunday School lessons, virtual concerts, etc. These are all designed to create new pathways to connectedness. Today's brief Easter message, delivered by video, is another example of this effort. Even if you are not particularly comfortable with these resources, I encourage you to take the time to learn how to use them, and I invite you to invest in participation. I know your friends and neighbors need you, and I believe you need them. This morning, brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a brief message of hope and about hope. The hope I speak of is the hope in Jesus Christ and his atonement. Elder Uchtdorf said it this way, Because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we need not fear, for we will live forever never to taste of death again. Because of his infinite atonement, we can be cleansed of sin and stand pure and holy before the judgment bar. The Savior is the author of our salvation. Those who come unto Christ, repent of their sins, and live in faith will reside forever in peace. Think of the worth of this eternal gift. Surrounded by those we love, we will know the meaning of ultimate joy as we progress in knowledge and in happiness. No matter how bleak the ch chapter of our lives may look today, because of the life and sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we may hope and be assured that the ending of the book of our lives will exceed our grandest expectations. We hope in Jesus Christ, in the goodness of God, in the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, in the knowledge that prayers are heard and answered. Because God has been faithful and kept his promises in the past, we can hope with confidence that God will keep his promises to us in the present and in the future. In times of distress, we can hold tightly to the hope that things will work together for our good as we follow the counsel of God's prophets. This type of hope in, in God, his goodness, and his power 
refreshes us with courage during difficult times and gives strength to those who feel threatened by enclosing walls of fear, doubt, and despair. Please know, brothers and sisters, that fear, doubt, and despair are all part of the human experience. The natural man and woman that Paul spoke about in the scriptures is drawn to these responses, especially in moments of stress and challenge. No one is immune from these moments, but we need not dwell on them. Though the clouds are often ominous and will sometimes even bring storms that wreak havoc in our lives, because Jesus gave his life as sacrifice for us, we need not be dominated by those emotions. He knows our pain and has descended beneath all of our sorrows. As we turn to God in humble prayer, he will ease our burdens, he will lift our load, he will bear our grief. As we seek forgiveness of him, he will grant us new assurance, he will help us forgive others, he will light the path ahead perhaps only one step at a time, and only as we take that step. But we can still know with confidence that it is enough. Hope is often represented in the scriptures as one leg of a three-legged stool, and so, and so stands only when accompanied by faith and charity. In this context, faith in Jesus Christ and love of God and his children must also be strengthened if our hope is, is to be sustained in the face of life's challenges. So I also encourage you to strengthen your hope every day by living in faith and by acting on your faith through charity for others every day. Faith is nurtured every day by our choices and by our willingness to quickly obey God's direction to us uh, that God's, direct, God's direction to us and observe the impact of those choices in our lives. God's direction comes from the Spirit, from the Scriptures, and from the Holy Prophets. John said, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. If you feel your faith is wavering or stagnant, I invite you to listen more carefully to God's direction to you, to act daily to repent, and to resist the urge to substitute your own will for God's will in your life. I promise you, you will strengthen your faith as you follow his guidance. Charity is the pure love of Christ. In, Mor in Moroni, we read the key to obtaining this love. Pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart, that he may be filled with his love, which he hath bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ. As you pray for this gift, he will help you see his children more as he sees them. He will help you have strength to act upon this, that new perspective. Each of us is a beloved son and daughter or daughter of God and each is deserving of our care and attention. With this perspective and his strength, we can reach out to lift others' burdens and help those who are in need of succor. This selfless service, in turn, will help us heal our own wounds and brighten our hope. I bear witness to you, brothers and sisters, that there is reason to hope for better days and for return to normalcy. We will return to work and school and church. Dawn will pierce the darkness of night, turning it to day, as it always does. More importantly, there is eternal hope in Christ. Jesus paid the price of our sins and has experienced all the pain and sorrows of each of our lives. He bore that burden, as heavy as it is, perfectly. He died and was resurrected. He lives. And so he is the hope for the hopeless. I bear that witness in his holy name, even Jesus Christ. Amen.